In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a setting circle on an Orion X-T8 Dobsonian telescope's base. If you're not already familiar with how amazing setting circles are for helping you jump from object to object in the sky, um, I have another video that demonstrates exactly how it works, uh, and that's in the description below. But this video focuses on installing the setting circle on the Orion. The first thing we have to do is measure the base. I'll remove the telescope first. Go ahead and remove the top. This is just a cheap and easy way to uh, get that nut off. I could go get a ratchet, but or, or I could just use this technique. I have another video where I show how I use just a vinyl record and some bigger Teflon pads uh, to make this turn very smoothly. So we're going to get rid of this bottom part just for now. I'm going to flip this over. I don't want that to fall. Got a couple of books here. Pay no attention to those books. All right. Let's measure the diameter. Uh, it's about a little under 19 inches, so I'm gonna need a setting circle that's about 18.75 inches in diameter and the bolt that's in the middle here, um, it's about basically 10 millimeters. So let's go to the website and let's create our setting circle and I'll show you how that works. All right, now that we've measured the diameter of my base and we have the diameter of the bolt, uh, we're gonna go to this website, which is called blocklayer.com slash protractor dash print dot ASPX. This is a really cool free tool that's available online to basically build custom, essentially custom setting circles for what we're using it for. Um, and actually, since the last video that I made on setting circles, the person who made this was very kind and they added an extra feature and that is the thickness of the tick lines. So now we can make an all black circle on the outside and still read it at night because of extra wide tick lines. So let's jump right into this. We're gonna be filling in information here. Okay, so up here at the top left, outer diameter, uh, I know that mine's going to be about 18.75 inches, which works out to about 476 millimeters. Uh, let's see, the diameter of the center hole, it's going to be about 10 millimeters. And we'll check that box so that it gets drawn. Okay, whoops, that updated everything. Okay, um, I, of course, I do want the five degree labels as well in between these big numbers. And something that you have to pay attention to is the direction that the numbers are going. Uh, I'm only I'm only concerned about the outer layer. I don't need this inner layer, so let's uncheck the inner marks. Okay, so I only care about these outer numbers here. And I need the numbers, in my case, since my setting circle is going on top, I need these numbers to increase going to the left. As you can see, it's not doing that now, but that's okay. Up here on the settings, uh, I just click uh, this counterclockwise uh, radio button right here and it causes the numbers to go in that direction. Now you have to think about this when you're building yours because mine's on the top but the pointer is actually attached to the bottom. The pointer never really really moves once I set that zero. So let's say I get everything pointed at the North Star so that's setting an azimuth angle of zero and the pointer is lined up with zero. Now let's say I want to point my telescope to the east so I start rotating it uh, the telescope itself to the east uh, relative to this, the scale, my pointer is actually going to move to the left. So, you know, as I head to east, which is about 90 degrees, um, it should go to the left. So I'm going to need my numbers to increase going to the left. Yours may be different. Uh, there are some alternate ways to mount the setting circle, say on the top of the very bottom disc, but I'm keeping mine simple. So 
I need my numbers to go to the left. Uh, and I also want um, a black rim because I found through testing that that's actually, uh, the numbers are easier to see at night, especially if you have a red light. Uh, okay, so let's make this face a little bit thinner. I don't want that big amount right there. And I want the tick marks to be kind of squarish. Okay, now here's the feature that the, the person who made this uh, added, and that is make the tick lines really thick, and that, that's pretty awesome. So, okay, so we have the center mark, we have a black outer rim. Now, there's only one thing left, and that is uh, I won't be standing inside my telescope looking out to read these numbers. I will be outside the teles I will be outside the telescope ring looking in. So I need to invert these numbers. Um, and this will make sense once we get it mounted on the telescope. Um, but basically, you're, you'll be looking at this from the outside. And so everything looks good. So up on the top left, there's a blue button that says Diagrams the PDF. I'll go ahead and click that. And that takes us to the next page where we're going to output it. I have to pick a paper size. And it needs to be big enough to hold the setting circle. So it has to be greater than 18.75. I'm going to pick the Anside D, which is 22 inches by 34 inches. And I'm going to give it a margin of five millimeters on each side, just so the printer doesn't get too close to the edge. And I'm going to call this Orion XT8. Uh, let's see. And everything's good. And I will push all to PDF, that button right there. It's generating a PDF file right now. And there it is. Now, all you have to do is take that file, save it to a thumb drive, take that thumb drive to Staples, make sure Make sure you don't have any tax documents or anything like that on the thumb drive. Take that thumb drive to Staples, ask them to print it on large format paper. Tell them it's a circle and it should be about 18.75 inches. They can double check all their measurements before they print it, make sure nothing scaled wrong. Uh, also ask them to laminate it. Now, the Staples near us is limited. They, they can only go up to 24 inches. In this case, that's not a problem. They can laminate it too. Um, previously on my previous video, the setting circle was huge. It was 24 and a half inches in diameter. So Staples could not laminate it so I had to take it to a specialty printing shop. Anyways, this is all good. This is for the Orion XT8. You should be able to get it printed, laminated at Staples or any other print shop that can do that. those large format printing. So you get your setting circle, you bring it home, you, you trim it, you cut out the circle, and then we head back out into the workshop. Let's go ahead and remove the bolts that hold the base on because the, the setting circle is going to be sitting on the, the underside of this. We're going to basically squeeze the setting circle between this framework and the base. So just remove the screws. Okay, we can level that out some more. So this is the top. It's seen better days, but uh, I bought this used uh, and it still works really well. So here is the setting circle. Um, there's zero right there. And there's the hole. I just cut a hole that's roughly the right size. And um, so this has the black banding around it. Uh, I use the option, as I mentioned before, of the very large tick marks so that I can see this at night. It looks good at night. So this should go right here. This is the front. I've already put a, a center mark. I just bought, got a straight edge and just scratched it in the surface. And that should be zero. zero mark and I'm going to tape it down with just some painters tape just to keep everything in place okay so we're gonna mark I'm gonna put this roughly where it should be right there is about zero as it turns out you don't have to be exactly on because you'll be 
you'll have a movable pointer. So you just have to get it kind of close. But you do want it to be kind of at least centered. smooth. That's a real cheap fix. Okay, so we've got it on there. It's looking good. Okay, okay so this is looking pretty good. There are several holes that we have to cut. Let me get my X-Acto knife. All right, so I have an X-Acto knife. I'm gonna cut these holes. They don't have to be exact. They just have to be big enough to let the bolt go through. All right, so all the holes are cut. And uh, now we can put the mount back on the frame. So we'll just flip it over and line up the holes. And we put these all back in. All right, so we can flip this over. Nice smooth turning. All right. Now let's just pull this off just to see if we've got good alignment. The zero is right under the handle. Uh, now, as it turns out, you could theoretically turn it up 90 degrees so that zero is over here uh, because this is, it's just kind of a reference circle, uh, but I, I want it to make sense for basically just using the telescope, so I have zero pointing straight out the same as the telescope. Okay, now, we just put the washers back on, put this back on, and this nut. And let's see if we can use the old trick. I'll do the last two turns by hand. Um, I like to make sure that there's just a little bit of wiggle room in this washer. Yeah, that's good. 
And I just put this cap nut on. All right, so this part is, um, this part's all done. Let me take the tape off. You may need to, um, if yours curls up like this, you can put some clear tape, some packing tape, uh, or you can staple it down, whatever works for you. So that part's done. Now we need a pointer. All right, so we're going to use a combination of self-adhesive magnet tape and a sheet metal pointer. Uh, it's kind of flimsy, but it does the job. Uh, this is mounted on the very bottom of the telescope, and it curls around up and over and points to the mount. I'm going to show you this as I install it. Uh, this is sheet metal. It's pretty sharp. I put some tape on it just to protect myself. If you don't have your tetanus shot, I recommend maybe not doing this and using some other technique. There's there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but let's go ahead and I've, I've actually already attached the magnetic tape on, so I'll show you what it looks like. Now you want to mount it uh, between two feet. All right, so I've already attached the uh, magnetic tape and I found out on my other build that it actually will come off. So I had to epoxy it on. But let's go ahead and put the pointer on. I've just got a, a fender washer and I pre-drilled a hole. Now, I mean, technically, if you have enough flex in this, you won't need the magnetic tape, but I, I want to use the magnetic tape, uh, you know, just to have that uh, secondary strength there. So let me turn it over. We have it, like that. So uh, just, a, just, a rough, uh, just, a, just a rough estimate of how I'm gonna do this. Uh, let's say I put the telescope on here, I go outside, and I point it at the North Star. Uh, let's say it's a little bit off. So I, I have everything pointed at the North Star, and we know that should be zero, right? Because the North Star is zero degrees azimuth. We just grab this pointer, and we move it back over to zero. Then from that point on, for the rest of the night, I can use my altitude and azimuth settings uh, that I get from my smart app on my phone to find any object in the sky. And also, I'll have a digital inclinometer on the body of the telescope to give me my elevation angle. And just, just knowing those two bits of information, you can find pretty much any Messier object in like 30 seconds to a minute. It's pretty awesome. All right, so as far as finding the elevation angle, some pretty cool things. This is a digital inclinometer that I got from uh, Harbor Freight. And I got this one from Amazon. So this one's like 35 bucks. This one, I think is $12. And you know, this one will get you close too. So either one, whichever one works for you, I say go for it, give it a try. Um, oh, by the way, this is my counterweight. If you use a Dobsonian's long enough, uh, you'll give up on spring adjustments and you'll just go with a quick moving counterweight. This is just a, it's a one pound dumbbell uh, with permanent magnets in it, so. So there's one last thing I forgot, and that is that for the whole setting circle system to work, um, it needs to be level. So <clears throat> I have this, this two axis level here, and I'm just gonna attach this with two screws. Uh, I found that, uh, actually, not, it doesn't make much of a difference, but you can either have the side to side in front or flip it around 180. I've actually found this is a bit uh, more useful. Uh, you can put it anywhere, but this is just as good a place as any. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it. All right, so where, where are we? So I've marked two holes. Um, I cut little squares around them and I drilled them. And now I'm just going to install my level. And I just have two screws here. Get them started.
All right, pretty good, I think. All right, now we're ready to go observe. All right, step one is to level the base. Step two is to point it at the North Star. The telescope is pointed at the North Star. So here's the pointer. It's not pointed at zero. So we're gonna move it to zero. And now our entire setting circle is set to true north. All right? And the angle is uh, 32, about 32 and a half degrees, which is the same as our latitude, which is exactly what we would expect from the North Star. All right, so according to my smart app, uh, the Messier object M5 is located at around uh, 217 degrees azimuth and 53 degrees elevation or altitude. So let's set that first. Tilt that up. All right, a little too far. That's pretty good. And 217. Let's get that so you can see it. 217, 215, 216, 217. So that should get us pretty close. All right, so I'm going to look through here and see what we see. All right, well, you can't see it, but <laughs> it is awesome. It's centered right in the eyepiece. It's actually a little off center, but that's not too bad. So, anyway. Have fun with your setting circles.